There's much reading in the scriptures today. We're going to look at giving. Exodus 35, verse 4. <clears throat> and Moses spake unto the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, All right. God spoke. God commanded. God is not going to speak to your preacher today, your pastor. God is not going to tell your pastor, your preacher, tell the congregation to give. He's not going to. Because to the congregation, if they faithfully read their Bible, they're going to read Exodus 35 at one point in their time. They're going to read about things that God needs and, and, and the giving. They're going to read about it. Now, if you got a worldly, all are welcome kind of church and let's have fun, let's have games, but let's not have seriousness of being a Christian. Then you're going to have to get up and tell them to, to give. But a man that is saved and loves the Lord Jesus Christ and has the indwelling Holy Spirit in him. He's going to want to give to his church, to others. Giving, loving, is an attitude of God that's passed on to the Christian. But let's keep going. Take ye among you an offering, okay, unto the Lord. Whosoever is willing heart. Not forceful. Don't don't have a tithing. We're going to challenge God this month. We're gonna we're gonna break the tithe this month. We're going to have you know you're gonna sign a petition. You're going to sign a pledge. You you're gonna make yourself give give ten percent. We're gonna look at that willing heart later in Second Corinthians. But right now, notice under the law, tithing, 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 tithing. Here is a event of the children of Israel by their preacher, their pastor, Moses, and God, Jehovah. And he says, a willing heart. No tithing. Willing heart. There are people, when, when the preacher gets up there and preaches about tithing, 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 10%, 10%, and you get people to, you know, I 10% my business, and look how much has grown. Yeah, it could be the devil. The devil could be fooling you. You could be having devil in your church. I know God gives, so does the devil. You get all these lost people, we sold our souls to the devil, and they make a fortune. Not for God, but they do make a fortune. Most of your politicians make a fortune because they sold out to the devil. Don't tell them only God gives riches and all that. That's not true. The rich man that Jesus told about and, and Luke went to hell. A willing, willing heart. Let him bring it. Offering, bring, willing. An offering of the Lord. Gold, silver, and brass. And blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair. Ram skins dyed red and badger skin and shittim wood. Oil for the light, spices of, for anointing, and for the sweet incense. Do you realize this list that we're reading about? You know where this list came from? It came from Egypt. When they left Egypt, they borrowed from the Egyptians because Egypt's going to get it back later. With Israel's sin. But this stuff they carrying came out among the children of Israel from Egypt, the type of the world. You go to work to earn money to pay your bills in your house and support missions and your church, help Christians and help others by the worldly money. Now, don't go separating yourself and I'm not going to have nothing to do with the world and all that. That's this stuff came out of Egypt. They are carrying this stuff. For sweet incense, verse 9. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephah and the breastplate. 
Every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. Now, it's a command, but is a willing. The tabernacle, his tent, the coverings, his tatches, his boards, his pillars, his, uh, his bars, his pillars, his sockets, the ark, the staves thereof, with the mercy seat, the veil and the covering. The table, the staves, you know how many times you read about the, t the tent, the tabernacle tent, and the pillars, and the sockets, and the curtains, and the veils, and the ark, and the altars, and the tables, and the, you know, you read more about that than you do the birth of Jesus Christ. Because this is a pattern found in heaven. The candlestick also for the light, the, his furniture, his lamps for the oil of the light. Look, his, his, his stave, his vessels. God uses pronouns. He uses the male, his, not hers. The altar incense, his staves, the anointing oil, and sweet oil, the hangings for the door of the entry of the tabernacle. The altar for burnt offerings, the brazen gate, his staves, and all the vessels, the labor, and his for the hangings for the court, the pillars, their sockets, and the hangings for the door. This is everything the pins to the tabernacle, the pins to the court, their, their cords, the clothes for the service to do the service of the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. You say, well, what did you read that off of? Because God gave them, can I say respectfully, God gave them a shopping list. Gold, silver, brass, blue, purple. He gave them, listen, these are the materials I need. We need these materials. Now, let's say you have ivory. That's not on the that's not on the that's not on the list. We don't need ivory. And there are things in church that people give. And they think the Lord's gonna bless it. And it's not. Mowing the lawn for your church building. I don't think that I don't think that's a reward in heaven. Because I can't find church building in, in and anywhere in the New Testament, we find going house to house. Now, if you were to have a biblical church meeting in a person's house, and you came over and helped that person get the house all cleaned up for everybody to come over that day, that would be a reward in heaven. But you see, the, the, the pastors will have you, the preachers will have you, that, that house of God that you have, this is the dwelling of the house. Lord God, we thank you for being in your house. That's not church. That's Old Testament. That's temple. And the church keeps saying, oh, we're not under law, we're under grace, and yet we got the holy house of God. And there's even some churches, the temple, the Bible Baptist temple. That's not that's not, that's not New Testament because the temple, the house of God today is the person, the male or female, but don't get me going. So there is a command, but there's no tithe. Give of a willing heart an offering. No tithe. We read that together. There is no tithe. Now, chapter 36. Verse 1. And they wrought by zeal and Aholib every wise-hearted man. People who knew. People who, hey, I know how to work with gold and silver. Hey, listen, I know how to work with wood. I know how to do sewing and, and, and fabric and all that. In whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work in all manner work for the service of the sanctuary. So when you have a trade, you have a career. You are established for the fact of learning how to do something and do it. That comes from God. That's a talent. So 
if you know how to work with wood and your church building has a wood job, get in there and help. Use your talents. Again, now, okay, you know, mowing the lawn and all that. You could use your talents for God in some way. How about instead of honoring the church building, let's say you, you are a plumber, okay? A Christian in your church, a brethren of you, has a toilet that is broken. You as a Christian know how to work in plumbing. God is giving you the wisdom and understand of plumbing. It would be an honor and it would be a glory to help your fellow Christian and fix their toilet. Now, God would bless that because that is helping a Christian. Mowing the lawn and cleaning the seats in the church. No. Listen, I had a church. I've had a lot of churches. I had a church where we sat in a park in a gazebo. And we taught the Bible. I taught the Bible and I had people there listening and learning. We had natural AC. The wind would come. Sometimes we had to hold our Bibles down. We didn't have to clean the place. You know, we cleaned, we left the place as it was. When we came and when we left, we didn't leave any garbage. We had toilet facilities that if, if it broke, we didn't have to pay for it. We didn't have to pay for insurance. We didn't have to pay for the roof. We had to pay for nothing. We sat down in seats. We opened our Bibles and I taught the Bible. And people would not come. It's in a gazebo. You don't have stained glass. No, we don't have any of that junk. You realize one of the things with church buildings that your church budget has to pay for insurance and everything like that for that building. Listen, money for the Lord, offering for the Lord, should be paid for the for the pastor. For the utilities and for all manner of getting the gospel out and training Christians. And Moses called Basil and Ahoy, every wise hard man, in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. So they're all working together who can do the job. And if they did not know how to do the job and they weren't taught and they couldn't learn, they didn't do it. There was something else for them. You're not going to be the do-all of the Christian. There is specific talents. And the talents is spoken about, I believe in the Gospel of Luke, is one guy had 20, one had 10, and one had one, I think it was. Or... I think that was the talents. You may have one talent only. Well, if you put that one talent to God, that's better than a guy would have five talents and used it for his own glory. Listen, if you can sing and you sing for the Lord at home, in the car, at work, at your church assembly, at the wherever you you sing glory to God from your heart to the Lord, that's your one talent. That's a lot better than somebody who uses their talent for the stage, for money, for the world, for fame, for concerts. One will be rewarded by God, and one will be ex will be trashed by God. And, and listen, if you can sing too, I mean, you can make a living. You, you can, let's, let's say, you, you, the singing. You could train other people and they could pay you. 
to learn how to sing. There's nothing wrong with, with making a living off what God's given you. And But if you give it to the Lord, if God is giving you a paycheck at the end of the week, 40 week, 40 hours, all right, you got your utilities you got to pay. You got to pay for gasoline. I mean, your standardized budget items you got to pay. That money is a talent that God gave you to bring home. And when, when it all comes out, when it works all out at the judgment seat of Christ. And if you spent more money for dog and cat food than missionaries, you wasted your talent. If you spent more money paying for a trip to a fantasy land somewhere, or an ultimate cruise, or this vacation state event, or watching, you know, these, these drivers go left, 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 left. If your budget tallies up for the talents of entertainment, rather than helping fellow Christians out, helping the church out, giving a salary for your pastor, you're in trouble. Now, these people have been given talents. They've been given means of God, and now they're using it for God. I mean, I could imagine if a carpenter was there. All right, he, he's using the woodwork for for the tab, for the tabernacle. And let's say a, a good, you know, let's say a Jewish woman comes over, says to the to the carpenter, "My chair broke." And you know what? It, it, it's my husband's favorite chair. We he sits down, he eats, and you know, he sits down and it broke uh, the leg. If that guy were to take his wood skills and make a leg for that chair and fix that chair, and she gives him a shiko or whatever, you know, the Jewish money, all right, he's made a living. That money would help pay his bills. And then if he would take his, his skills as a carpenter and go and help Bazio and Ahoyab with the tabernacle, now he's giving his talent to God. He's he's made a living. He's got to pay his bills. Now he's given to God. And see, a lot of times these people, you know, give to the church building. The church. Well, look, here we are. They're, they're giving to the, the tabernacle. There is no tabernacle. There is no temple as a building of building materials that you can go to the to the uh, the home improvement center. That's not the Christian. And friend, I think we're going to go in a day and age where we're going to go back. We're going to leave the church buildings and we're going to go back to people's houses. We're going to go back into the wood. Listen, underground church does not have a, a church building. You won't believe the places that underground church meet to hide from the government. I think America is going to go there. Or if the rapture happens and your church building is, is here, your, your church building does not get raptured, I believe the Antichrist is going to use every Baptist church as a place to mark the 666 and the mark of the beast. I, I, would, I can imagine like this. All those in Daytona Beach, Florida, there are four Baptist churches that their builders meet at those Baptist churches, and you can get it in the right hand or you can get the forehead. Now, to some Baptists, that was sacrilege because you honored the building rather than God. And they received of Moses all the offering, offering, not tithe, which the children of Israel had brought for in work of the service of the sanctuary. All right? Okay, in your church building, you need, they need toilet paper. They need writing paper. They need copy paper. They need to pay the electricity. They need things in the church building to keep the church building going. Okay? God does not speak to the electric company. They don't have to pay the electric bill. No, no, no. God don't do that. 
Okay, the church doesn't have to pay taxes, but they got to pay the electric bill. They got to pay for the paper. They got to pay the pastor. The pastor may need a book to study the Bible, a commentary. That's the church's job to pay, not the pastor. Everything that pastor does is study the word of God that he can bring you a message of, of not salvation. I had a church where, you know, every Sunday morning I preach, you know, a gospel message. Everybody in the church on Sunday morning is saved. You know, if the pastor needs his commentary because he's going to be preaching, you buy that commentary, not the pastor. When I worked for Electric Bolt, General Dynamics Submarine, I would go to the tool shed and tell them, say, listen, I need an electric grinder and the disc. And then I, I give them my badge, they swing my badge, make sure I bring it back. The company provided me the grinder. The company provided me with the tape. The company provided me the tools. Had brought to the work of the service of the sanctuary, verse 3, to make it with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. What happened? Oh, you know, bring your up. They're bringing their offerings every morning. Free offerings. All the wise men that wrought the work of the sanctuary came and every man from the work that he made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded. Now, this is what your typical Baptist preacher wants. He wants the people to give above and beyond the tithe. So the church financial books will show a plus. Hey, we paid all the bills. Look at all the extra money we got. So what your pastor is saying is, in the general sense, is the church building, the records, we are to have an excess of money while the congregation, most of them, are living from paycheck to paycheck. And with this, with this recession, what, what this, what's going on in America right now, we are definitely in financial trouble. And yet the pastor, above and beyond the tithe, it means we want the church books. I don't want to have to worry about the church finances. <clears throat> Meanwhile, while most of the congregation is worrying about their finances. And then they church, take the church finance and they use it for stupid, worldly, God, ungodly. The church I went to, the missionaries that they support weren't even missionaries. It was just something to give money to. But notice when we read in chapter 35, God gave specifically what you were to give. Electric bill, utility, uh, water bill, sewer bill, the, the garbage. You got to tell the congregation where the money. Oh, you know, we do that once a year. We do that twice a year. No. You have got to tell them where their money is going constantly. Chapter 35. And you don't throw above the tithe and the tithe and all that. And don't expect to have a higher income and a higher amount in the church budget when your congregation is living paycheck to paycheck. You may have some that live above and beyond their means. They may have, you know, stocks. They may have a great amount of, of uh, the savings. Okay. Not many people do. And even worse now, in this time, it's going to get worse. Most of the congregation don't have a surplus. So they gave enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. Moses gave a commandment. Here's the preacher. Not God. 
hey, you know what? We, we got too much. We got enough this month. Everything's paid this month. Uh, hey, you imagine your pastor saying this? Everything's paid. Uh, we're doing fine this month. And cause it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for an offering of the sanctuary so the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. Now, a preacher will say, well, see, you know, it's the gold, it's the silver, it's the, it's the lambs, uh, and, and the goat hair, and it was the wood, it was the oil, it's not money. Okay, that's okay. But you take the church money and you turn it into goods, electricity, water, the wood, paint. You turn it into goods that were mentioned in 35. You're just getting revenue. But you take that revenue and you put it into material things, chapter 35. And when you have enough and, and above beyond all the material needs of the church at that moment when will a pastor stand up and, uh, on would be towards the end of the month and say we're not going to pass the collection plate this week we have enough the bills are paid the missionary money sent out and we, for the rest of the week for the rest of the month whether this this week and next week for the rest of the month everything is paid you don't have to give you'll where will you hear a pastor say that? I'm going to tell you something. Many, not all, pastors that, that, that go with a Malachi, which is under the law. Malachi is under the law. And they'll turn around and say, well, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Then they run to a book that's under the law. And I believe that many of these preachers that get I know preachers never preaches about tithe, and the church is financially sound. Never preaches about tithe. He doesn't need to. The congregation saved. The congregation loves the Lord. The congregation allows the Holy Spirit to work. And the, the, the people give their offering. The women dress right. Because the Holy Spirit, listen, if you got a church that's, that's saved and Holy Spirit filled, your needs are going to be met. Now, you may have some financial crisis. You may have some, some troubles and problems. Paul said in his life, he was one of the greatest Christians. He had perils of this, perils of that. Perils of this. He was naked. He was hungered. He was in shipwrecks. The church wants pearls. They don't want perils. And I think a lot of times when a pastor, some pastors, get up there and they preach the tithe, they preach the tithe, I think is they don't have faith in God. And the congregation does. I think he looks at the, the books of the church. And then he starts panicking. We're not going to be able to. Uh, I got to get him give more money. I got to have him give more money because we're in financial. Well, that's what some of your congregation does when they look at their paycheck. Oh, I wish I had a raise. I wish I had more money. Oh, these bills are due. <laughs> Pastor. See, you want to be Nicolaitan. You want to be higher. You want to be above. You want to be the anarchy. You want to be. And then the, the peasants. <laughs> can't live like a peasant in the church. We want everybody in the church to, that, that, oh, that woman, she gave her two might, she gave everything. That's what they want. They want to be fully, some of them, not all, want to be fully blessed and, oh, while the congregation suffers. Now, notice we did not read the word tithe. We read willingly. We read an offering. We read free. And the people came and did. And they had no, no monthly above the tithe. They had no fill out this card. We had no faith promise. 
and they knew exactly what to give, and they knew exactly where to get where it was going. When they built that tabernacle, there were some Jews say, "Hey, you see that badger skin up there? Yeah, I gave some of that." And there are some churches, whatever denomination, is you will give money to that church. I wonder where it went. Where did they use the money for? How much money does the pastor get? How come the pastor's got this, all these vehicles and his RV, and he gets to travel around, and he gets to go here, and he's, oh, he's always... Well, what's going on? You know, I I went I went into a Baptist church before before we came to Florida. I went to a Baptist church and I knew the preacher. And he was he was a boring preacher. I mean, but I mean, he learned, but he was just the deliverance was poor. And you know, I wanted to go to his church, and he met in a little schoolhouse, an old schoolhouse. I said, you know, I, I want to go go see. I want to go see him. I want to tell you know, my family and I are going to Florida. Back then, I had good, great possibilities of ministry, which the church lied to me. So we went, and he they built a new church, and they had like it was like it was like this huge mausoleum. And it was it, they had marble and granite, and they, they had in the bathrooms a person there. They you know they would hand you if you needed soap, and, and you know, and, and they had a coffee bar, and they had you know you could go to this Sunday school, you can go to that Sunday school, and we left. And I, you know, the people in that church to give you just imagine, we gave money to the ministry, and we have a fascinating church building glamour glorious meanwhile there are missionaries who are living in a ruckety building with one of them tin roofs that leaks and sitting on logs something wrong with that You, you will give to some missionary. Some churches don't even give to missionary. You will give to a missionary who lives in poverty. And your church, ooh, you spend more money. Some churches spend more money on the grass without spending no money for a missionary to go out with the gospel. Not no missionary junkie program. I mean, an actual missionary that goes and preaches the gospel. Some pastors, some churches, they make above and beyond what everybody else makes. And sometimes, in this day, and sometimes he only does one Sunday a month. I mean, one Sunday a week. He doesn't do a Sunday night. He doesn't do a midweek night. There are some pastors out there that get paid and they don't do counseling. There are some pastors out there that get paid. They don't do hospital visitation. I've been in those churches. They don't call you. They don't care about you. Well, wait a minute. That's the pastor's job. It, it, okay, I'd be like the, the, the ram skins and all that. The pastor is supposed to give to his congregation the help, the love, and the care, the prayers. A member of that church is in the hospital. It is his duty. It is his lovingness to go visit that person. That's a $5 bill in a collection plate as far as the pastor would go. Again, it's not, it's not money. It's not coins and, and, and revenue of, of bills. It's that plumber who fixes the the, the, the brethren's toilet. It's the pastor sit down with that family and help them. Pastors don't do that. I was in the hospital getting a, getting a toe amputated, and the pastor come and, and visit me. Okay, 
Now this guy goes to goes to Mississippi. He goes to Alabama for his little preacher conferences. He goes and preach. Well, look how I many I had this, and he keeps track of how many people he comes to church. So he comes to visit me. He tells me he says, you know, I'm going to have this member of the church. And he's going to be visiting people here at this hospital because it's just too far from me. Also, your preacher conference all the way in another state is much better than going to a hospital of a church member. You're the shepherd. With the chief shepherd over Jesus, you're the shepherd that flock. You know, I'm going to go off and leave the sheep with nobody. Or I'm going to leave the sheep with a hireling. Pastor, as much as you want people to tithe and give money to the church, you got to give back to the church. How about that? How about the pastor said the pastor giving money in the plate? He should have an offering too. How about the pastor giving the people red, uh, badger skin, goat's hair, wood, oil? How about the congregation? You giving back? How about that? Let's have a message about that. How about the pastor's duty to the congregation, to the sheep? I know of people who've been in church, one, one instance, and they left. Well, you know, I, I don't know what happened to them. Well, it, it, they fell off the earth. I tried calling them a couple times, but they never. How about visiting? You know, you will go visiting, knocking on doors, come to our church, come to see our church. We're having we're having this guest great preacher. We're having fellowship. Come to our church. Why can't you go knock on a on a sheep's door and say, hey, I want to know what's going on. Are you OK? Can we talk? All right. They, they may be mad. They may slam the door in your face. So will they when you go witnessing, they'll slam the door in your face. I think a lot of pastors, especially in the lives of seeing church age, they think they're going to get the pastor's reward crown. They're not going to get nothing. They deliver the message, whoopee-doo. Most of that congregation, by the time they exit the door Sunday morning, has already forgot what the message was about. Or they remembered that one joke. So, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Let's see what Paul has to say to the Christians. 9 7. Now, most of you preachers get up there, you know, we're going to go above the tithe. We're going to do the tithe. Uh, Malachi. And now they're going to say, oh, brother. Yeah, I knew Stalin was going to run there. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Every man, that's interesting, every man. Unsaved. According as he purposed in his heart. No tithing. So from your heart, so let him give. You know, I have been in church where we had a visiting missionary. And I've had the Lord say, you got $5 in your pocket. Put it in the plate for it. You know, we're going to take a special offering for this mission. God said, put that $5 in there. We've had missionaries come in their cars, which is terrible. And men who knew how to work on cars said, let me have your car for this afternoon and I'll fix it all up. No charge. Or you pay for the parts, I'll fix it. We've had where, where past uh, missionaries come in their children. And we've had families take the children. Hey, let Let's check. How about you, you and your wife? You, you have a a date day or night. We'll take the children. We'll take them out to eat. And can we take them to a store? Maybe get them some something. You see, the purpose of the heart is not tithing, giving money into a play. It's helping other Christians. 
helping the pastor. All right, yes, the, the church building has needs. So do the people. I've had many times, I don't know who, I've had the, the, the church treasurer come up to me, hand me an envelope, say somebody wants you to have this, and they've given me money. I have done it also. I have given money in church that went to a Christian. And I put money in the plate. Not grudgingly. Oh, the pastor makes me want to preach. The pastor preaches about tithing. Preacher. Oh, giving, giving, giving. I haven't been in the church for a long time. And here I am. And he's talking about giving, giving, giving again. And it's true. The principle of these churches today is three messages. Make you feel good. You got to be saved. Or give, give, give. And maybe along with a holiday message. It's Mother's Day. We've got a Mother's Day message. Father's, Father's Day message. Pretty much a lot of these churches out there, you know what they're going to preach. <laughs> I know a, a pastor, he... <coughs> <coughs> Somebody's got a little styly dial. And... They pull a, a old sermon. I don't pretty good. Yeah, I'll use this sermon. Grudgingly. You have to. You must. Grudgingly is when mom tells her son or daughter, take the garbage out. <laughs> you better clean that room. Then mom wants me to clean my room. Ah. What's wrong? This is my room. The boss gives you a dirty job, and uh, I can't believe I, I got all this other stuff here. I got the ones he put. Uh, that's grudgingly. You know what God says? If you don't want to put that in the plate, or you don't want to do that, don't. Because I believe if you do something for God of the church, of other Christians, and you're doing it grudgingly, I don't think God records that as good. Or a necessity. You know, there are preachers on television and radio, if you don't give me this money by this by this date, if I don't get a million dollars by this date, they're going to turn us off. We're going to have all kinds of problems. Don't give them no money. Because God won't. If you get that money, be oh, you know, he's going to go off the air. I got to give it necessary. Uh, I don't think God records if you give it to him. You don't get the money, then you let him get off the air. Maybe God didn't want him on the air. You don't need a preacher, pastor, televangelist, a radio evangelist, or a mission. You know, a missionary comes, I'm going to have all this money. We're going to have all kinds of problems. All the God says, don't give necessarily. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Glory to God, I'm going to give. Glory to God, I'm going to help. Glory to God, I'm going to do. Don't do something so you can be under the pastor's wing and get the pastor's favor. Don't do it. You won't be blessed by God. It's called a brown noser. I'll clean up a butt kisser. I clean that up. God won't reward you for that. God's not looking for you to kiss the pastor's butt. He's looking for you to love God, love the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to the Holy Spirit, and do for him willingly, like back in Exodus 35 and 36, not because the preacher forced you, not because of the message driving you. Listen, God is not going to work with somebody. Okay, we're singing 45 stanzas of just as I am to somebody comes up to this altar. Okay, no, God won't listen to that. God will God will work with a, a, a person sitting in the pew and the preacher's preaching about David and Goliath. He's preaching about the birth of Jesus. He's preaching about Paul's in a shipwreck. He, he's preaching about Peter is sitting in jail. 
he, he's preaching about Elijah and, and, and the woman in the oil. And a man's sitting in the seat and the Holy Spirit says, you know, you're going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Well, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that guy sits in Peter and says, listen, Lord Jesus, however, whatever, I don't want to go to hell. I, I, you, Jesus, you, please. God will honor that man who willingly gave himself and sought Jesus Christ than, than a church singing 400 stanzas of just as I am. I know a preacher who was in the church like that. And the pastors, you know, they keep singing and singing and singing until somebody came to the altar. And this guy, I think he was a teenager, he was with his teenage friend, and they made a pact. This week, I will go up. Next week, you go. They would go up just perfectly so the preacher would stop the singing and let him go home. God ain't going to honor that. For God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have all sufficiency for all things, may abound to every good work. Now, see, now, the preacher's going to say, if you give above the tithe, you tithe, and we do the monthly tithe drive and tithe this, tithe that, tithe this, here a tithe, there a tithe, 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 tithe. Oh, my preacher had a farm, tithe, 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 tithe. And on this farm, he had George Washington. Tie, 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 tie. God will take care of you if you do right from your heart. Satan will take care of you if you do it from anything else. Listen, like I said already, I already said earlier, Satan can make you rich and you think it's God. Think about that for a while. Not everybody in the church that's doing well, prospering, and everything good and hunky-dory that would make Joe Olstein very happy is the work of God. I mean, if you're thriving in the church and, and your bills are paying, you got a good car and your children are going to good school and you work for a, a beer distributor, that's not God. God would not want you to work for an alcoholic beverage company. Okay? I bet the abortion doctors are making good money. That's not God. Now, for those who can see this, we're going to do something here. And I like that I can do this kind of thing. We're going to search the Bible. And what we're going to do is, you can see, it says T-I-T-H and then the star from Genesis to Revelation. We're going to look at the word study of the Bible of the word tithe and everything to deal with it. So do search. And then we're going to do it the result map. And my ugly face is going to disappear. Hey, what happened? You don't need to see my ugly face. Now, tithe. Okay, from Genesis to Revelation, King James Bible, tithes, 24 times, 24 verses, tithe, 14 verses, tithing, two verses. So 40 times in the Bible and 32 verses do you find tithes. I'm going to make this bigger. You don't need to see my face. There is a verse, two verses that have tithe three times. Deuteronomy 26, 12, and Nehemiah 10, 38. Old Testament books. Old Testament books. 16 chapters has a form of tithe out of 1,189 chapters in total of the entire Bible. If you were to read all the chapters, all the verses, Involving the word tithe, it would take you, reading out loud, five minutes and 52 seconds. A pastor can take that to 45 to 60 minutes. And maybe for a whole entire month. Okay? The verses. There are 25 matching verses for the word tithe in the Old Testament. There are seven verses 
in the New Testament. Now let's look at the New Testament. Matthew, Jewish, one time. Luke, Jewish, two times. John is, is pretty much a gospel for the church age, zero. Acts, zero. Okay, Paul, zero. Romans, 1 Corinthians, zero. 2 Corinthians, zero. Galatians, zero. Ephesians, zero. Philippians, zero. Colossians, zero. 1 Thessalonians, zero. 2 Thessalonians, zero. 1 Timothy, zero. 2 Timothy, zero. Titus, zero. Philemon, zero. No time in the Pauline church epistles do you see any form of the word tithe. Hebrews, 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 Jewish, Hebrews, Israel, Hebrews, Jews. Written to Hebrew Christians four times. Old Testament and then books written to Jews, no Christian. Tithe, tithing, tithe. What was it? What was it again? Tithes, tithe, and tithing are all Old Testament or Jewish, Hebrew, Israel subject, topic, okay? Deuteronomy has the most verses. The Nehemiah, Hebrews, Leviticus, Numbers, Second Chronicles, Malachi. There's the book that the pastors run to. For all the verses in the Bible, Malachi is 6.25%. Deuteronomy is 21.88%. This is every form of time. All right. Out of Malachi, out of 55 verses in the book of Malachi, it is the most at 3.64%. Out of 303 verses in Hebrews, four verses are about tithe, 1.32%. 406 verses in Nehemiah, five of them talk about tithe. That's 1.23. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, my phone dream. The book that has the most tithe. Out of 959 verses, seven verses, 0.73% is about tithe. Uh, this one, uh, frequent count shows percentage of total matches from the search. Again, Deuteronomy tops the list at 9%. And I really don't know how many words are used. It's only a thing. But, you know, there are some churches and some preachers, I apologize for the phone ringing. There are some preachers and some churches that... Uh, they have specific months where it's all about giving, all about tithing. Faith promise. Well, I just showed you the numbers. Go back, rewind, and look at it. Hit pause and look at it. And when it comes to tithing and all that in the Bible, The main theme is Israel, Hebrews, Jews, in the Old Testament sense, except the book of Hebrews. The Gospels are not New Testament, because you would have to have a death. Jesus did not die to the end of the Gospels. There's only really one New Testament book that has tithing, and it's Hebrews. And of course, many of the churches run to Hebrews like it, like they run to Matthew. You're going to give to the Lord. Give because you want to. Give because you love the Lord. Give because it's right to give. Not that you have to give. You want to, do it. If you're being forced to, don't do it. Don't give grudgingly. Don't give in that. Give because God loves a cheerful giver.